Today on Core Conversations, we have Crystal Hadnot. Crystal is the owner of Synergy Total Health and Wellness, and today we focused on the nutrition side of her business. Crystal was dropping knowledge on how to detoxify our bodies and the best methods to do so. I loved her approach, which was not centered on depriving, but on adding to enrich your fuel. We talked about mindfulness, we explored our relationship with food, and how our childhood informs our eating patterns. Oh, and she teaches Pilates too. Enjoy the conversation. Okay, well, I am Crystal Hadnot, and my business is a long name. It's Synergy Total Holistic Health and Wellness. Wow. Um, and there's a whole story behind the name being that long, but that's for another day. Yes. But um, I, um, my business is really kind of like a resource for all as it relates to health and wellness. Uh, I'm personally a practicing uh, nutritionist. And uh, inside of my studio space, uh, I have a medical massage therapist. Uh, I do physical therapy in the form of Pilates with clients. Uh, okay. And, um, you know, that's kind of it for me. Because for me, I believe that movement of the body is and food is where we find healing. So those modalities yes. exist within my business. So you have nutrition physical therapy, medical massage therapy, which is the movement of your lymphatic system, mm -hmm. and nutrition. Amazing. So do you deal primarily with corrective exercise? Or do you have like performance-based clients coming in as well? I have, because I'm an ex-athlete, I do have that performance uh, clientele. Uh, and, but a lot of them don't realize they're injured when they come to me. So I'm really co doing corrective work, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> which is always interesting because as athletes, you don't even realize you have like, I'm like, do you realize that one side of your body is a whole inch off? Like they don't even realize no. um, right. that their alignments are off. And that's why they have a reoccurring issues on one side of their bodies or mm -hmm. their performance can't be per perfected because their body is just not in sync with itself. And right. so uh, I spend a lot of times, although they thinking they're coming to me to help with their performance, it's really, it ended up being corrective work anyway. Yes. Now, uh, I've had some conversations with the Kairos and, and some of our, our guys around here that work with athletes. And, you know, they've kind of made me think about the fact that sometimes those muscle balances aren't necessarily a bad thing because you need that yeah. imbalance for your sport right yeah yeah i played tennis from age five through college and okay because um believe it or not i have a tall personality i'm only five two <laughs> and okay. for a tennis player five two is like midget status right mm -hmm. so i the fact that i had an imbalance on my left side was a positive for me because my strength was in the forcefulness on my left side that I threw athletes off and plus I was faster. And yes. so because I was faster and stronger on, and dominated one end of the court, it mm -hmm. ended up for me in tennis being an advantage. An advantage. That makes sense because if you're playing someone who has a strong forehand, they figure that your weak, your, your backhand is exactly. not going to be as strong, but then they're, you're shocked by the fact that it's balanced yeah. in exactly. terms of its power. Makes sense. Uh, for those who are watching, if you have any questions when it comes to performance, exercise, nutrition, throw them in the comment section as we as we flow here. Um, I just love to have that interaction. That I can see your people on on here as well. Yeah, I have some people on. Come on, say good morning for my people that are on, so I know who's on. Yes. Uh, so you do a lot of workshops. I see, like you know, like the detox workshops and programs and stuff like that. Can you talk about some of those programs? Um, yeah, so what I, what, well, I'll look at it from what my, the my theory is. So I really believe in a lot of people getting rid of irritants and toxins before we even introduce nutri nutrients to your body. Okay. Um, because a lot of times I tell people we're putting on deodorant without taking a shower. <laughs> you know, because everybody yeah. starts these programs of eating all these healthy foods, taking supplements and vitamins but you haven't got rid of the toxins or the irritants that's inside of your body. So right. the nutrients can't absorb the way they need to absorb because it's, you're full of toxins and you're full of different irritants that may be within your gut that you don't realize that you have. 
Yes. So, and it's the same thing with, with exercise. Like you really can't increase your performance until you do corrective work. Right. Um, so I really approach people from dealing with the root of their issue first. And mm -hmm. so I do that through the detox programs and really working with your body as a whole from a seasonal perspective. Um, okay. And try to seasonal. introduce, yeah, I try to introduce people. Um, well, I tell you, I'm part, I'm part Native American. Um, and so I on flowing with the phases of the, ah, you're cutting out. Okay, we're back. Yeah. There. All right. Yeah. So, so I, I, uh, about I really the earth. I've been flowing with phases of the earth. Yeah. Okay. So really um, dealing with from season perspective, like summer, spring, winter, fall. So yes. just like foods are in season during certain times of the year, which means the nutrients are higher during those seasons. So we detox the body the same way. Interesting. And, okay. In that whole cycle. So like your gut detox is best in the springtime uh your skin which is a lot of times why you a lot of people's skin in the summer gets really irritated or they have what they call summer acne is because your skin is going through a detox phase during the summer months so really wow. just helping people understand how to work in tandem with their body yes. um, and feed it foods through the seasons and detox and cleanse it through the seasons. so you give yourself nutrients seasonally as well as detoxing your body seasonally you know honestly chris i i used to think that was just a marketing ploy like i didn't realize that that was legit like that was like you know it's spring time to detox i didn't realize yeah, that there was actually a, a correlation a lot of people don't really um understand because it sounds like i know when i first was introduced to it, <laughs> it was through my great-grandmother and, you know, I was just like, that's one of those crazy folktale type things again. Yes. But when you look at it from a person who, um, you know, I grew up on a farm and foods and uh, things happen, everything has a cycle. So right. understanding how that cycle works and working in tandem with that cycle made, started to make sense to me. And yes. then so I started doing just a little bit more research on how everything is processed in this, in this cycle form. And so mm -hmm. just really kind of working in tune with your body. Okay. So then the question came up here about factoring in blood types. Blood types. Yes. So do you, do you bring that into account? Not unless they have some issues. So blood types, um, I mean, I know it's like a big fad back in the day or a trend right. that, you know, eating for your blood type. Uh, mm -hmm. If you um, have some certain deficiencies, it plays a role because uh, just because of the makeup of a different blood type, you're more prone to have certain ailments and deficiencies. So when you're dealing with um, from a healing perspective or dealing with a different deficiencies or ailments, yes. Uh, but from a, just from a general perspective, no, not really. Right. And now, you know, a lot of times with these things, they're more descriptive than prescriptive. Yeah. So when, when you look at blood tests, for example, is that something where blood, That's more of a... It's descriptive. So um, it's kind of... It's, it's, it's helping you better understand the genetic makeup on the inside of your body. Yes. Um, and you do that through a multiple ways. And blood type is one of those ways, one of those descriptive markers of understanding your body, but it's not the end all be all. And right. so that's what I always want people to understand. It's, it's one way to understand your body, but it's not the complete way to understand your body. Yes. Um, it's going to sound weird to cycle back to this, but I, what you're just saying a minute ago about putting deodorant on without, put, without taking a shower, I like that <laughs> analogy of saying understanding how do we detox the body before we introduce the new things and the, the all these different ways. Can you just talk a little bit more about that, just so people understand that? Because like we have just yeah, exercise so, people on here, and, and that's a pretty key concept to, to grasp. Yeah, and so detox. I always tell people does not mean go and buy a thousand juices and go on a juice cleanse. That's not what I'm talking about. Um, okay, and it's really about teaching people not how to eliminate, but how to introduce. 
Okay. Um, and so it's adding on instead of taking away. So it's really changing also the perspective of what people look at detox. Because from because nowadays when we say detox in the Western world, people automatically make an assumption that we're eliminating things. Yes. Um, you're eliminating t toxins, but you're not eliminating foods. Um, and so, yeah, so it's really figuring out, okay, taking out those things in your diet that are not seasonal first. Like, mm -hmm. so looking at, are you eating things that are out of season, which means that they're not nutrient dense? So remove those out of your diet first. Uh, then when I say look at irritants, we try to figure out like what foods, which is different. And this is where one of the descriptions like blood type, genetics and stuff like that play a role. Uh, food intolerance, like looking at what irritants that are you eat, are you possibly eating that may not yes. agree with your particular gut microbiome. Yes. So we remove okay. those irritants out of your body. So we're removing through the detox, we're removing things that are not seasonal or nutrient dense. And we're mm -hmm. removing things that are considered irritants in the body. And we're introducing more nutrient dense foods to the body. Gotcha. Yes. And that, <laughs> that little comment just sent three questions to the board just around how do you introduce those things in summer detoxes and all those different things. So can you just, yeah. how do you suggest that four day program or start with your 21 day? 21 day. Um, the four day program is for people who are scared. So a lot of people are like, hey, I don't know yeah. if I'm ready to commit to 21 days of changing my life. So I try to, you just take, call people scared. to make it like kind of like a, okay, here's an idea of what you need to do. So that's where the four day, or it's for my clients who's been working with me. They've had a consult with me. They have their plan. They go on vacation and they wall out and they come back and they just need something to kickstart a back into their program or a reset. So that's where the four day is really for people who are not really ready to commit to 21 days mm -hmm. or they're, they need something to just reset them back on track. Yes. Um, and get rid of those like sugar cravings that they introduce back into their bodies and things like that. Mm -hmm. So really yeah. kind of just like clean their slate. So um, I always suggest if people are just looking for a way to kind of just like really balance their body out, the mm -hmm. 21 day program is the best set. If you're somebody who's dealing with a particular ailment and you're looking for healing, that's when you need kind of more of a one on one consultation. Yes, that and makes a couple sense. of my clients are actually on here, which is so cool. Nice. Hey. So, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So, can you speak to plant based diets, like plant strong diets and that sort of thing? Um, so, it depends. So, I work with people who are both meat eaters and not, but I also am really heavy on people making sure that at least 50% of your diet is plant based if you okay. are a meat eater. 50%. Um, and and understanding that, you know, you do have to have at least half your diet should be plant based, okay. um, even if you are a meat eater. Um, and, and I'm a meat eater. So a lot of people just like, ah, and, mm -hmm. and I'm a meat eater because of an autoimmune disease. I actually was not, I didn't grow up being a meat eater. It, I didn't start eating meat until I was 38, 39. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so a long time. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, anyway, uh, so the plant-based programs are like, say, for instance, they want to do the 21-day program. And with that program, I do give recipes, but they're a plant-based diet. There is a plant-based version that I offer those particular clients as well. Yes. Nice. That's, that's good. Uh, Mogul Plies is asking, if you have finished radiation for cancer, is now a good time to do a 21-day? Who asked that question? Mogul Plotties? Oh, okay. I thought it was one of my clients because I have a couple okay. of clients that are in radiation right now. I was like, yeah, I know the answer to that question. Yeah. Oh, but, uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Because <laughs> I saw a couple of them on here that's in radiation right now. Um, yes. Do I suggest it? Um, I would, but I also would have a phone call with that person first, a quick phone call to see um, what type of medications they're on to make sure that we're also uh, making sure we're working hand in hand with the meds they own. So I would first have a quick phone call with them to see yeah. what medications they're on or what type of radiation they're on. And um, if they're doing radiation, a combination of radiation and chemo, or if they just got mm -hmm. off of chemo, because all those things matter. 
Yes. Before, you know, this, you know, putting them into a program. Right, right, right. But yeah. I do have clients that have been pre, post, during radiation on the program. Okay, nice. How did you get into nutrition in the first place? Uh, well, okay. So it's been twofold because I, I <laughs> okay. told you I was a lobbyist in my first life. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, and sorry, on the sidebar, uh, a quick sidebar. I love how you weave in some social justice line in the middle of a, what did you eat for breakfast? I'm like, yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I didn't think about it. <laughs> like you just slide it in. So that's, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and the people who either been in my, cause I used to teach political science at the college here in Houston. So okay. if you've been in my class, you knew I would talk about food, but I would also, you know, I'm leading a political science class. So, um, uh, so that's always been kind of like a part of my life journey and style. Uh, yes. But I literally knew I wanted to be in health as it related to food as early as like 10 years old, because I was at mm. school doing a family tree. And I realized that majority of my family members passed away fairly young because of preventative diseases. Yes. And they were all food related preventative diseases. And so that was like always like an aha. And I was like, I don't want to die at 60. And that was the right. norm for my, fi my family. Um, wow. And, and, and th but the 10 years, the 15 years leading up to 60, they're on all these medications, you know, so it's just a poor quality of life as an adult. And I didn't want, I didn't yeah, want I'm not that. Gonna like that. And so I was like, I don't want to be on insulin. I don't want to be shooting myself. I don't even like needles, you know. So that's where I knew... I wanted to be involved with something, but I thought it was always from a public policy perspective initially mm. um, and an education perspective. Um, yes. I was extremely active in my community. Um, it was my, my godfather was a congressman for God's sake. So oh, yeah. I just yeah. knew that the route I was supposed to take was through changing policy and changing education. Uh, but I realized when I was going through my own health issue at the in my 20s that here I am I'm educated mm -hmm. uh I'm working with people as it relates to policy but I still wasn't getting the questions answered that I needed answered for myself as it related to my own health and wow. that's where I changed my approach a little bit and understanding from a from another perspective like where can somebody go to outside of a doctor to figure this out because by the time you get to a doctor it's almost too late too late or or it's not too late but the doctor can only give you xyz because i was frustrated because the doctors wasn't answering the questions they're really not trained to answer and i didn't understand that like and so my doctor broke it down I was like look i am a doctor of medicine I am yes. not a doctor of food. Like that's not what that's not what I am. So you're right. asking me questions that that's not, you know, the answer that I normally give my clients. Yeah. And so right. I was like, okay. Yeah. So yeah. that's when I got into nutrition from that pers from a different perspective as far as nutrition. Yeah, that's amazing. So then, you know, I used to say it, like for my clients who went to a doctor and a doctor would give them some really like low level, really safe advice and I, I got to the point where i was so fresh i was like these doctors are here just to make sure you don't die yeah and that's their job they're that's doing their, their job. job right they're doing their job but now if they have to i would refer to i have a nutritionist who's a good friend of mine a registered dietitian I refer them to them refer them to you because i want people to live optimally i don't want them to live to just not die like i want them to live like up here not like here right yeah and um, and that's yeah. that's what and, you're doing. And, and that, yeah, and that's why I was like, there has to be someone else in that route to kind of help people to get to where they need to go and to understand. Because yes. for me, it was like, okay, I not only now can show you the way, I understand because I've been there personally and did yes. my own life. So right. I now can answer questions that I used to have to mm -hmm. someone else and so that's where 
I really, you know, love what I do because now I get a chance to be that answer to someone when I needed an answer. Yeah, I can really tell like you, your love for what you do. Um, it just, it's just oozing out of you and just the way that you talk about this. So who would you say is like your ideal client? Like the person who walks in a door and you're like, I would train you for free the rest of your life because this is so fun. I love My what you're doing to My ideal client is that person that's completely frustrated because that okay. was me. Like, okay. just like, look, I've tried this. I've tried that. I've tried this. I did what the doctor said do. I'm still bloated. I still feel like crap. I don't, I'm not sure why I feel this way, but this is the way I feel. Mm. Um, because that was the confusing part for me. Because when I had, when I got diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, I was a marathon runner, a Pilates instructor, and a nutritionist. And I got diagnosed yeah. with an autoimmune disease. And yeah, I was that completely make sense. frustrated because mm -hmm. here I am with four doctors and, and I kept telling them, I have chronic fatigue. I have bloating every day. Mm -hmm. I can't operate this way. And I don't yes. want to be on a thousand meds. So my mm -hmm. optimum client is that person who, who is at that state of frustration. And yes. I kind of am like their guide on the side to bring them through that level of frustration and mm -hmm. show them that there is a way to deal with this. And probably in a non-traditional route who's open right. to non-traditional routes because yes. you have to be ready and open because that's that's a, that could be a scary space too um because mm -hmm. i decided to take on um a disease through no medication and that required four doctors for me to see four doctors and they were like yeah. no man. i was like no meds if you're telling me there's no cure for this disease why would i be taking medication hmm Right. And that, that was my problem. I was like, so I'm just going to take these meds for the rest of my life for what? Like, what's the purpose? <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, break down why I'm doing this. And t and can you tell me long term what, what kind of effect this has on my body internally? Right. And they couldn't tell me. And so I, I decided to yeah. do non-traditional. Mm -hmm. Well, that speaks to the bigger discussion about us as healthy people taking control of our health. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. I know uh, some of my mentors, same thing, like super healthy, and then you get diagnosed with something because your doctor looks at you, and not that I'm hating on doctors, but there's a sense of you're fine, you'll be okay, so we have to take responsibility <laughs> for our own health. And that's, and that's, where, and that's where it was with me, because that did my annuals and Blood pressure is great. Cholesterol is great. Glucose is great. You know, um, mm -hmm. all your vitamin levels are optimum. Everything looks great. Your your perfect weight. Yes. Um, you know, so it's just like you're. I, I know you're active. You are a marathon runner. I know you eat well. And at the time, I was pretty much raw vegan. Um, mm. So <laughs> they were like, "You're fine. You're fine." Like, no, something's wrong. Like, I'm telling you, something's wrong with me. I'm not, I don't know what's wrong, but something's not right. And, yes. um, and that's where, you know, I now tell my clients that when you go in for your annual, make sure you ask for a complete comprehensive lip, lipid panel. Lipid panel. Because, yeah, because they'll check the norms, but you want to know all, you want to know all your, Yes. Your vitamins, your minerals, you want to know your hormone levels, your T levels, yes. you want to know all of it. Yes. And, um, and if one number is close to being off, it, and another one is also close to being off, are they correlated to each other? Those are good questions to ask. Yeah. That to be explained to you. So just really having them explain those levels to you. Right. That reminds me of something, uh, Crystal, that I did at 40. Like, on my 40th birthday, I set up for uh, a physical with my doctor, and I asked for, like you said, every panel, every blood test, uh, ECG, got the whole nine done. And just being healthy, completely healthy, but I said I wanted it as a baseline. Yeah. So at my 40th birthday, I did that. I got everything done. So when I get a physical, it's now compared to not what's the norm on some chart on the wall, but what was I at 40? Yeah. 
right? Because like that's my baseline, not you mm-hmm. know what the the national average is. Yeah, because um, everybody's body is different. Like your exactly. body is not your body standard is not someone else's standard. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, and that was for me. That was part of that taking control of my health and just understanding what those things are. Because, you know, if you can be within a normal range, but at the low end of the normal range, and that's fine on paper, but you know, you don't feel okay. Yeah. So then, you know, you got to make your adjustments. Someone and make asked together. here a while ago, I guess, how do you yes. start in order to introduce? Yes. I was like, they keep popping up. I was like, what's that? Um, oh, introduce different foods back into their diets. Mm-hmm. Um, so... If they have irritants, so um, I don't know if that person who asked that question is familiar with what's called the elimination diet, where basically okay. there are certain types of foods that are natural irritants um, mm-hmm. to most people's gut a- in general. And, yes. that, and that's based on the standard American diet. Like if you grew up with the standard American diet, which I love that it's that the acronym for that is SAD. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because it, it is sad. But anyway. Right. Yes. <laughs> That's a commentary but, um, on itself. But um, basically, so the, the number one thing that I normally take out and reintroduce is nightshade fruits and vegetables. Because okay. a lot of people assume because they're fruits and vegetables that or herbs that they are healthy. Healthy. But they can be something that's healthy that's also an irritant. Um, like for me, it was tomatoes. Who knew something as healthy as a tomato can be something actually highly inflammatory and irritant to the gut. And yeah. I struggled with gut issues for over 20 years and didn't realize it into 20 years that it was tomatoes. And I was mm. eating tomatoes on all my salads. Pizza is my favorite food. And I don't understand anybody who eat pizza without tomatoes. Right. And, <laughs> and so I didn't realize that until I went through that process of uh, I first go through eliminating nightshade fruits and vegetables. Because a lot of people focus on gluten and dairy, but nightshade fruits and vegetables are really high in inflammation yes, and cause a lot of inflammation. Inter- 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 yeah, yeah. Interesting. And this is all like really, in a sense, high level, like technical stuff, because you know your stuff. So for the average fitness professional who has their people coming in day in, day out, what suggestions would you give to me to give to my clients to know when to refer them to someone like you? Well, I tell people if you feel if you if you if you feel like you're moving every day and you're pretty much eating healthy but you feel you still don't feel good, that's when you should see a professional. Okay. Like you know, like you can't get those last whatever pounds off, or you waking up you feeling bloated, or you have this fluctuating chronic fatigue midday. Uh, it may be uh, something that uh, that you're doing that you don't realize that you are doing that could be a problem. Okay, that's good. Um, there's a question here from Black Cat Plies Hamburg saying, how do you suggest starting to lose weight after a depression? Uh, one, be kind. I, we talk, I was telling you that yes. before, be kind to yourself. Um, as a person who struggled with depression after the loss of a child and my mother, mm-hmm. I always tell people, be kind to yourself because the first thing that generally happens post a depression is that you find something else to obsess about oh, and a lot boy. of times it be, you can get obsessive with your health and um you can be too healthy so i would tell them one just take it one day at a time and and don't try to make a complete like oh i'm gonna drop 20 pounds by xyz mm. don't put too much pressure on yourself and just yes. really be kind to your body manage your expectations exactly exactly yeah um being kind to yourself is is so key um i you know i i'm really thinking about that a lot especially this week so many conversations that we have because you can start off with good intentions about doing things that are good for your body i'm going to make these changes etc and then 
the changes aren't coming fast enough, and then you beat yourself up for not achieving the goals, and then you're in this vicious cycle of trying to do good and then not forgiving yourself for not being good enough. Yeah, exactly. I, I tell that to my clients all the time. I was like, look, if you've been eating hamburgers for 30 years, do not try to stop eating it in 30 days. Like that, don't do that to yourself. Like yes. that's, don't, don't do that. Or if you have not worked out since we've been quarantined, do not commit to, I'm going to work out every day this week. No. Yes. Say, I'm going to find one day to spend time moving my body. Yes. And if it's today, if it is today. If it's not tomorrow, it's, you know, yeah, like really, right. really focusing on just having less, I want to say less expectation, but putting zero expectation mm -hmm. on what you should and should not be. Um, because yes. we we talk about all the time how people have expectations and definitions of what we should be, but we do it to ourselves as well. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then, so what's your thoughts on setting goals as opposed to just establishing habits? Uh, so my first thing I tell people is, <laughs> you know, like drink water. My clients laugh at me all the time. I was like, look, this is what we're going to focus on. We're going to focus on drinking water. Like, we're not going to change the way you eat. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're yeah. going we're gonna to drink water because a lot of times, a lot of things are dealt with, even vitamin deficiencies, if we're not dehydrated. Yeah. Right. And, and generally, when you start to drink water and you feel hydrated, you naturally have more energy to actually do exercise, um, you naturally have a better metabolism where your food is processing better. Uh, so all the other things slowly fall into place. So I tell people, we're going to focus on that. And we're not just going to focus it on for one week. We're going to master it. And like, let's just focus it on for the next two to three weeks. Yes. Um, and then once you get that down, then let's focus on breakfast. You know, yes. and let's for two to three weeks until it becomes a habit. Then mm -hmm. we're focused on lunch for two or three weeks. And so, yes. you know, so really just, you. really just really finding that one thing you want to change and not just say, oh, I did it. And then add something else because we do that to ourselves. And that's when we fall in not being kind to ourselves. So right. really just really focus on that one thing and then and stay there for a while and just mm -hmm. like rest in that and acknowledge yes. that you've accomplished that and then right. maybe add something else right well i love the fact that you're talking from a place of adding things as opposed to depriving ourselves of certain things and punish punishing ourselves for doing exactly yeah yeah i hear that mm -mm. and i tell people really a lot of times we're dealing with um and it's, you know, labeled intuitive eating these mm -hmm. days or mindful eating um, yes. uh, is that we, uh, we get caught up on, you know, like we get, we, we punish ourselves because we have a, like, oh, I love chocolate chip cookies, you know, yes. and right. then we punish ourselves for loving something like chocolate chip cookies. Mm -hmm. But I always talk to my clients from a perspective of when was the first time you can remember having those chocolate chip cookies? Right. And Indeed. what was the emotion you felt? Yes. And what was the last time you had those cookies and what was the emotion? If it's a mm -hmm. tie, if it's tied to a healthy emotion, yes. do not deny yourself those cookies. Now, okay. A bad emotion, emotion and why you feel in the need to eat it now mm -hmm. so yeah. really we talk about the emotions attached to the food versus that's the food, versus itself. The food itself yes i was going to say uh, mindfulness is one thing but I, i've asked a uh, last my other nutritionist who was on before the whole definition of relationship with food right and that's what you're yeah. getting into there and that's what's like yeah. yes like you know because that's it's that's mm -hmm. so much it generally so like, i tell people we only eat 10 things in our lives really okay for the most part there's like if you look in your kitchen right now 
-hmm. you have 10 items all the time, the same 10 items. Okay. And generally when we go away from those 10 items, it's attached to a relationship or an emotion that we have. And you have to figure out what's that emotion or relationship you have to that specific food and the why behind it. Yes. And understand the why. And mm -hmm. if the why is a positive why, do not deny yourself it. If it's attached to a negative why, let's deal with that negativity of the emotion, not necessarily even focusing still on the food. Let's deal with the emotion that's attached to it. And naturally yes. the food goes away. Right. Yeah, or your relationship with it, emotions right? Emotions and not our bodies. Yes, right. So how do we not become slaves to those emotions, right? Like, I feel like that is the piece that we have to figure out more so than, like, uh, ice cream sandwiches, like... Uh, uh, Somebody said ice cream sandwiches. Yeah, exactly. So, yes, I mean, it's like ice cream, you get some ice cream sandwiches with Pringles or with, you know, um, a case of Coke or whatever, right? Like, drinking whatever it is, like there's certain things and it's like to look at what is your emotion attached to it? What is the environment that sets up that craving and, and all those different things? There's, it's so much deeper than the food itself. Oh, that's Michelle said ice cream sandwiches. <laughs> okay. Um, so that's one of my clients. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so they're heckling you right now is what's happening. <laughs> ah, funny. Um, <laughs> I bet you can't eat them right now with this new diagnosis. You can't eat no ice cream, but we'll talk about that <laughs> offline. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, really, it's um, I tell people it's really about um, with my clients. I have what I call a food mood journal. A lot of people talk about dieting. Um, from a perspective of like write down what you're eating, but yes. really I have a food mood journal. So what it, what when you eat this food, it's not only mentioning why you ate, you know, mm -hmm. that you ate that food, but what was the feeling you had when you ate that food? Because a lot of times yes. we don't even know what our relationship is to food, or we don't really even know our attachment or emotions mm -hmm. to food. So really understand it by writing down, like, how do you feel when you eat? Because yes. for me, it came from a, I grew up what, you know, when I was young, I got to realize I was poor, but I grew up what was considered extremely poor. So mm -hmm. mine was so attached to scarcity. So I when see. I did, I would overindulge because I didn't know when the next time I would eat initially. Yes. Um, when I when I realized in my 20s, I was like, why am I just like, I'm not even hungry, but it was food in front of me and I would eat it because it was attached to that emotion of scarcity as a child of not wow. knowing when my next meal would come. So really yeah. just understanding like the whys behind, you know, and really just sit with it and mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm eating this, but how do I really, really feel right now? Yes. Because like, you know, it could be a happy, it could be a sad emotion, mm -hmm. or it could be a why I'm eating it. Like all those things matter. Yes. To, you know, even like, why did I decide to even have this? Well, um, yeah, I was going to say with that you know, too. Like, why did you yeah. decide to cook this? Yes. Yes. Well, even Crystal, like, what about just the notion of I deserve this? I had a tough day, so I deserve this. Oh, like, it's not a happy, one. sad board. That's, that's the biggest, the biggest one. one. Right. But so, that's always attached to a childhood emotion. So I love talking to kids about, I mean, kids, adults about it because it's attached to a childhood emotion. Because I okay. was like, okay, what were you awarded when you were a child when you did good? Generally, you're still awarding yourself that same food. Yes. Like your parents is like, let's go have XYZ because you've been such a good girl or you've been such a good boy. Mm -hmm. We still do it as adults. Like right. I've been a good girl. So, and I worked hard and I pushed myself this week. I deserve X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. So really even just understanding and a lot of times you really want that emotion of, it's really saying that I don't feel worthy unless I have this food. Yes. It's affirming what I've done. But why is your self-worth attached to that food? So understanding that too, like, why yes. do I think I need this food to, to, to celebrate myself? Yes. 
Those yeah. are some tough questions to ask yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Especially right now because we're forced to sit with food. Mm -hmm. You know, because yeah. we're, we're, we're isolated with food. Right, exactly, and exactly. It's not no longer. Oh, I'm going out with friends, or I'm I'm without. I'm having these big, large family gatherings. Right now, these these last four or five months, we've been isolated with food and thoughts. And I and I tell people that's why I had this rush of clients March, April, and I said, just stop going to the grocery store because that's that anxiety. <laughs> Like yes. you, you have food at home. Like you don't have to right. like, you, you know. Or yeah. like, oh my God, I'm gonna run out of food. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. Yeah. But that's because that's the <laughs> yes. anxiety of the unknown. Yes. And so that unknown emotion was end up being attached to the food that we were eating or the food that we were going to get or the yes. food we were hoarding. You were going to buy foods that you never would have never bought before. And right. that you're not gonna eat. Right. But just in case. Just in case. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Real Yoga Cat saying, like, we ha now that we have 2020 hindsight, uh, we can let go of those past coping mechanisms. Like, that's exactly it, right? Coping yeah. mechanisms. Yeah. This is, that's why I said now is the perfect time. And I'm not just saying this because this is what I do to work with a professional to kind of really have that grand understanding so you can come yes. out on the other side. Mm -hmm. of having that control, taking your control back and not yes. allowing food to lead your way. Yes. Because now you have, where people think that they have less control as it relates to food, you now have more control than ever. True, true. This yeah. is a great time. You know, and I, there's, a, there's an ad that they have on TV here in Toronto all the time for a men's weight loss clinic. And their tagline for years has always been, if you could have done it yourself, you would have done it already. Yeah. Yeah. If you could have done it yourself, you would have done it already. So this is a time to break that cycle. And in the same way you come to someone for fitness to break that cycle of, of inactivity, to think about your, your nutrition, think about your fuel, think about your mindset, think about your relationship with food and break that cycle by having someone from the outside look in on you. Yeah, because we're really, I work them through sitting with those emotions that they may have attached to it if they're, you know, like needing that level of support, like, um, like uh, understanding like, okay, and, and it's, and it's really so basic, but not basic because people think like, it's, I mean, it's like going to school and you have worksheets right yes and so you really like are going through these worksheets of really figuring out like that true understanding just like you would for school and yes. understanding you know math concepts or english concepts or history lessons it's mm -hmm. the same level of understanding when it comes to your emotions to that's attached to what you do right and our bodies are worth it yeah, you're worth it. You deserve it. better. Yeah. And you deserve to know and have control over your own body. Yes. Whether that's understanding what the demand and ask for when you go see a doctor, mm -hmm. whether that's, you know, to have that connection to your Pilates instructor and say, mm -hmm. hey, I really want to understand what this whole powerhouse thing is and why is it so important, you know, yes, of holding yes. my body together, you know? Yes. So it's really, it's all of those things. Right. Amazing. So in our last nine minutes here, which flew by like crazy fast. I know. I can talk to you all the time. <laughs> this is, I mean, this is so good. We, we talked about Pilates for like one minute. <laughs> like we just barely scraped the surface with Pilates, but what, uh, what is what are your words of wisdom for our audience thinking that we have fitness professionals here, people who just want to do better with their overall diet and, and food in the first place? What are your words of wisdom for us? Well, I tell, my, especially my professionals that are working because that are working with people or yes. working with healing people. Our issue is that we don't stop to heal ourselves. Yes. So we're so busy fixing other people that we don't take the time to work on ourselves. Um, I know when I started my Pilates studio, I stopped doing Pilates myself. 
clientele. <laughs> You know, so because you really start focusing on your clientele and less yes. on yourself. So right. my my words Facts. of wisdom to my my professionals out there is to take the time out and work on yourself, whether it's to jump on that reformer, you know, whatever it is that you deserve to give yourself that time and work on yourself. If you are a nutritionist, dietitian, you know, like self-check yourself. Like, what did you eat today? You know, I do it to myself all the time because I actually have, like, I'm probably, it, it, people probably think a, a grade school kid lives here and I'm a teacher because I have yeah. notes, like, <laughs> all over my house to, like, self-check myself. Like, yes. literally, I have sticky notes on my refrigerator door as, yes. like, what, are you really hungry? Mm. You know, just to ask myself, like, before I open this door, Am I opening this door because I'm trying to feel a void of what I'm feeling in the emotion? Or am I opening this door because I am really needing food? Like, yes. what am I feeding right now? Like, what am I taking the time out to feed? Is it hmm. emotion I'm trying to feed or is it my body? What am I feeding right now? Yeah. Boom. That's the word. Because you, I tell people, every time you open your refrigerator, you're either feeding your spirit and emotion, mental, or are you really feeding your body? You have to figure out which one you decide in your feeding. Mm -hmm. That's a takeaway. Yeah. That's good stuff. Or just in general, that could actually be the word. Like every time you do something, figure out what are you feeding? Are you yes. feeding yourself? Like I posted today. Are you feeding or fighting? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. So in everything you do, whether it's movement, like why are you deciding to do this movement? Like, is it because I'm really trying to feed myself nutrients and fight off immobility? Because, I mean, I got into Pilates because of the injury. But I, I, when I read, because I'm, I'm such a PhD researcher type of person, that did you know that 85% of the people by age of 40 lose full mobility of their bodies? Just yeah. from lack of movement. Right. Yeah, I can believe it. So anyway, that's a whole nother discussion. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> the next next conversation. I, next I always conversation. say Yeah, yeah. The 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 whole point of a first date is to get a second date, right? Like the whole yeah. point of a first interview is to get a second interview. And um, we, we got we're a just, second day coming. We got a second day coming because this we're just scratching the surface of movement and just overall we haven't even got into movement. Yeah, that's a yeah. whole, a whole <laughs> yeah. other discussion. Absolutely. Um, thank you, thank you, Chris. It's been so good chatting with you. you. We've been we've been trying I to have, get this lined up. I do so. have to say one thing that I yes. really started following you because real man do Pilates. That was like they do. <laughs> they do. That was so catchy for me and. Um, I, and I and I admired it because when I first got into the business, I wanted people to know that Pilates was not a female's deal. It mm -hmm. was not. It's it's a people's deal. And yes. shame on you if you're allowing females to practice Pilates and you're not taking the time to do it yourself. But yeah. I see now it's becoming such a um, open thing, especially when you have celebrities and professional athletes now doing Pilates yes, and uh, sharing it with the world that that's their sec secret sauce is Pilates. Yes. So um, I really, that was the attractive factor to me years ago when I saw that real man do Pilates. I was like, they do. They do. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. Yes. Nice. All right, my friend, I'm going to sign you off here. Thanks again for a great, great Thank conversation. You. All great right. way to start my morning. That's no sure. doubt. There you go. Thanks so much. Thank you so much for joining us today on Core Conversations. This organic platform has been made possible by amazing people like yourself. So if you're a Pilates instructor or a movement specialist of some kind and you want to be a guest, please message me. If you're in some other field and you know the messages just resonate with you, message me. I'd love to have you on. 
All of our messages connect, and for some reason, they all help us in this battle. We're all in this game together, so I'd love to hear from you. Let your words be like to someone else. Check out our website, personalvictory.ca. Click the Core Conversations page to see who our upcoming guests are, and I will see you next time on Core Conversations.